Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. And in this video, we're going to cover how to create your own Excel velocity banking spreadsheet. So this is really easy. Some of you have asked in uh, some of the other videos that, that where you've seen the spreadsheet, like how do I create one? Or can you give me a copy of this spreadsheet? And I'm going to show you that it's really easy to create it by yourself, although we will give you the spreadsheet if you ask for it. Uh, go to the About section of the uh, YouTube channel, send us an email, and we'll provide you a copy. Uh, and if you have no idea what Velocity Banking is, go ahead and click the link below to Velocity Banking 101, 102. Once you've gotten a firm foundation of what Velocity Bank is about, come back to this video to continue your education. Now, let's go ahead and create the spreadsheet. Again, if you don't have Microsoft Excel desktop, you could always get the free live version or version from live.com, or you could use Google, uh, Gmail, Google Sheets and use their spreadsheet editor and you can easily create a spreadsheet. So you don't need to pay for any of this really easy. Okay. So to create your own Excel velocity banking spreadsheet, first thing you need is to create a budget, right? Really easy paycheck expenses and whatever left over is the savings. So pretty simple, right? So now what we do is we go back to Excel. We're going to put a little um, label here called average American. And then here, we're going to put the paycheck after that we're going to put the expenses and then after that we're just going to put savings okay and then right to uh to the right of it we're going to put the actual numerical figure so we'll, and i always like to use the same uh numbers over and over again just makes my life simple and repetition is the mother of all learning so you may have seen these numbers in other videos but i'll just put five thousand dollar paycheck three thousand dollar expenses and then what's remaining is two thousand dollars in savings right so we've done that and let's go ahead and color code this, make this a little bit spiffier. So paycheck will make uh, the color green, right? Green is the the color, the, the, that's the good stuff. Uh, and then expenses, we're gonna make red to signal that that's not what we want. And then savings will make it a neutral blue. So let's put that as blue right here. Okay, so after we've done that, so we have our paycheck, we have our expenses, and then we have our savings. Right. Next thing we need to do is within those expenses, just make sure we have a proper expense breakdown. So I wrote right here that the debts must be a separate line item. So what do I mean by that? First of all, let's go back to the, the Excel spreadsheet and type in expense uh, breakdown right here. And then let's put this in red. All right. And let's highlight these two. OK, so. What we do in the expense breakdown is write down all the expenses we have. So we have debt one, debt two, uh, rent, other, I don't know, like food, gas, uh, insurance, et cetera, right? What, but what's really important is that every single debt that you have must be its own line item, right? You don't combine like the debts and the payments of the debts. You never do that. Make sure that every debt is its own item. Whereas other things like rent and other, you can combine them, really. You can combine them and no problem will happen. But when you're doing velocity banking, when you do the expense breakdown, you want to make sure that every single debt is its own uh, line item. Okay, so for the debt, what we can just kind of make it up. We'll just say student loan. Um, we'll say ten thousand dollar balance and six percent interest, and we'll just kind of do averages. So uh, the average student monthly payment, I think, is four hundred a month, right? And then we're going to do kind of the same thing with the auto uh, debt number two. We'll just call it like an auto loan. And we'll say it's a 13K balance. And we'll just take that average figure of a $600 a month uh, payment. And now we're good. Okay. So now uh, when we put in our budget right here, these figures, it has to equal 3000 right? So we just put 400 here, 600 here, because that's the monthly payment. Rent, we'll just say it's 1000 and then other food, gas, insurance, they're, they're combined to 1,000, right? And so let's make all of these, we can do a little bit of formatting, make it a little bit spiffier. Right click, number format, and then we will use currency. Okay, so now uh, these, it's important that these expense figures add up to your expenses right here. Um, if you want, you can actually do a formula to make sure that they add up. So. If you don't want to manually type it, just use a formula. And all you have to do is type in equals uh, sum and then put in the column, which is B. 
and figure out what rows you want to add up. So I want to add up row seven to 10. So B7 colon B10, right? And then, so if one of these changes, so for example, this is like $700, then you'll see that this uh, uh, changes accordingly. So let me just change back to 600. Okay, so we've pretty much completed step one, which is creating a budget, right? And one of the things that we will do also is create the uh, velocity banking version of this budget, which will almost be similar, but you'll see that that the only thing that's really different is the, the flow of money, okay? So, We'll put velocity banking right here. And then we're going to, uh, after we um, do step two, we're going to come back to this step and you'll, you'll see, you know, how, what we're going to do with that. Okay. So step two is use a line of credit as an operating account. So we just have to figure in a couple of things like the interest rate, available balance, current balance, and the, and the interest paid. And you'll see what I mean by that. So you could kind of separate it that right here. So um, just pretend that, that we have a credit card or a line of credit. Um, that we're going to use for the operating account. So I always like to just do this. So interest rate. So just write a few things about, about the operating account that we're using for velocity banking. So interest rate, um, available balance, uh, total, no, no, current balance. And let me just go here. So let me just make this interest rate, available balance, current balance, Okay, and then interest uh, paid, right? All right, so so once we have that information, and let me just delete this column so that we can make this a little bit easier to see. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna get uh, a line of credit to use as our main operating account. And if you have no idea what a line of credit is, all it is is a financial tool where you borrow money you can pay back and then reuse uh, it over over again, just as long as you have an available balance, right? So credit card is a line of credit. I'm pretty sure pretty much all of you who are watching this video have a credit card. Now it's different, a little bit different from personal home equity business lines of credit, but let's just assume that we have a personal line of credit and and the, the lender or the bank, they lend it to you and they say, hey, guess what? You have a 15% uh, interest rate and you're allowed to borrow up to $25,000. So it's like a $25,000 credit card, right? $25,000. And right now we're not using it, but we always want to make sure that we have the interest rate, available balance, the current balance, and the interest we're going to pay out after we use it. Okay. Now, we've pretty much done step two. We, we're, we've written what kind of line of credit we're using as an operating account. You may not have a line of credit, but if not, just kind of go through the exercise and pretend that you do, right? So here... Um, our income is going to stay the same, right? So it's going to be $5,000. Actually, let me go ahead and copy and paste this and then just erase it for now so we can keep the formatting. Okay, so our income is still going to stay the same, $5,000. Uh, our expenses is going to be a little bit different. And let me show you why. So with Velocity Banking, the idea is, is that we're going to use this line of credit as much as we can to wipe out our debts. And then once we wipe out our debts, then, then we have cash flow recovered, which will kind of have like a snowball effect of wiping out our other debts. So what do I mean by that? So um, we have a $25,000 available balance. So what happens if we move the student loan and the auto loan to the line of credit? What happens when we do that? So let's just do that, 23,000 balance, okay? So these are gone, these are gone. Now this is zero, zero, right? What happens is that the expenses have magically gone down to $2,000, okay? $2,000. So what happens is that the rent is still there. The rent didn't magically disappear. All the food, gas, insurance didn't magically disappear. But when we move the loans to the lines of credit, the, the, the expenses just magically disappeared. And now... Instead of uh, one other thing is that we're not going to have savings, right? So this is going to be zero. What's going to happen is we're going to put our entire paycheck into this line of credit, take out the expenses accordingly, and then we're going to use our cash flow of three thousand dollars to bring down the balance pretty much every single month, right? Every single month. That that's all it is. We bring we we put our paycheck from here, 
we move it to here. So it's going to be about $18,000. And then as we need our expenses accordingly, it's going to go up, up, up about two, yeah, $2,000. And then if we goes about $2,000, then it'll, the current, the next month's bounce will be around $20,000, right? Around, because we, we're, we're approximating. Okay. So now all we have to do is just figure out how long it'll take us using this method to wipe out $23,000 of debt. And you can just do a simple formula where you uh, type in equals and then type in the previous months, which is G2 minus 1000. I'm sorry, not 100. The cash flow is 3000. And then next month's balance will be approximately 20,000, right? And then uh, we just kind of copy the formula, keep copying, keep copying. And then well, since this is uh, more than enough cash flow to wipe out this debt, we just put this to zero. All right. And you know what? Let's write another column for how many months it's going to take us. So month. So this is, um, I always say that the first month is actually month zero. So this is, we're starting at zero. Then it's going to take one month, two months, three months, four months, five months, six months, seven months. And um, so it took about us about seven months to wipe out this debt. It might take us another month just in case we had some emergencies. But here's the thing. Here's how we calculate the, the interest that we paid. And this isn't going to be totally accurate, right? So what we do is we take the previous month's balance and then multiply it by the interest rate. And then you divide it by 12. So you just do equals. Uh, what's the previous month's balance? That's G2 times the interest rate, which is 0.5, and then divide by 12. Now, why do we divide by 12? Because interest rates are quoted annually and you're calculating the monthly interest. Now, one of the things that I do want to note is that some of this is actually close but inaccurate math because the interest isn't calculated by by the monthly balance. It's actually calculated by the average daily balance. And you know, if you put your entire paycheck in, think about it. You put your entire paycheck in and your expenses go up, this number is not going to be 23,000. The interest you pay is going to be 23,000, but this is good enough, right? Don't make the math too complicated. Make it easy for you to understand. So we're just going to control, paste, paste, paste this formula. Control V, control V. And then we're going to sum up. Again, this is an approximate of the interest paid, right? So we click this right here. This is going to sum up uh, the interest. We're going to pay about $1,250 of interest after uh, seven months, right? So if you want to say, hey, hey you know, um, this is going to take us about eight months because we have to take into account the the interest. Um, totally get that. Well, actually, not really, but because think about it, right? So let's say we add this to here, then that's almost about three thousand dollars. So it's almost about going to fit in our budget. So it might take us an extra month or so. But I want to make it easy for you to understand that um, you're just going to take the interest, make it easy to calculate, but make it based on last month's. It's not really going to be based on the last month's interest. It's going to be based on the average daily balance, which is going to be, you know, that's going to be a lot harder to calculate. I'm a simple person. Good enough is good enough for me. So let me just go back here. So let me go ahead and sum it up here. Again, just use this button. Go ahead and do that. And we'll say it's about 1250 And here's the thing. Compare um, this spreadsheet to your own actual use case. So here's the funny thing. I borrowed about $100,000 uh, starting from January this year, and I summed up how much interest I paid with all the credit lines that I had, and I only paid about $6,000. Like, are you serious? I mean, yeah, it happened to be, but here's the thing. Most of those were zero interest credit card lines. Um, so, you know, uh, zero interest credit is the only time I think about using multiple lines of credit in general. We use one line of credit, but I'm just rambling on and on. Um, so back to my point, is that just approximate the interest. You don't have to be exact. You don't know the average daily balance. Just take the previous months times the interest rate, divide by 12, and then sum it up. Okay. So um, now, uh, since it took us about seven months to pay pay off this debt, uh, we're good. And one thing I do want to mention, I really forgot to mention this, is that when normally when you have like a credit line like this, um, the minimum payment is, is an expense. Right. It normally becomes an expense. That's why, like when you do a budget, they say, oh, credit card one is going to cost me like four hundred dollars a month and six or six hundred dollars a month. And you put it here. But what happens when you use um, 
a line of credit as your operating account and you put your entire paycheck, that expense essentially becomes zero. And if that doesn't make sense, just kind of think about it. Like that minimum payment only matters if you're doing that out of your checking account and using your checking account to pay bills and having savings left over. Whereas if you put your entire paycheck into the operating or line of credit as an operating account, that expense doesn't really matter. It, the 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 minimum payment satisfied and the average daily balance will be the lowest when you put the, your entire paycheck in. So a little bit uh, hard to it was a little bit hard for me to comprehend, but I, I want to make a note of that. So uh, this is Korean Atlanta mentorship. Uh, hope this was helpful to create a, a, an easy Excel velocity banking spreadsheet calculator budget operating count make the cash flow go down or make the balance go down by the cash flow, calculate the interest. And then you just, it'll take you about seven months to pay off $23,000 of debt. So for most Americans, that's like $23,000 of debt in a year. No way. Right. It's going to take me, you know, I'm going to be with this debt for the rest of my life. You hear that with like student loans, especially I'm going to be with this debt for the rest of my life. And that's not necessary. If you have the right numbers, you know, you, do your budget, you have the right tool, which is the line of credit, and then you're able to eliminate the debts to free up your cash flow. So as you can see here with these two debts, we just moved it to the, the line of credit. We, we freed up $1,000 of cash flow and the additional cash flow that we have is gonna uh, rapidly bring down the balance of the line of credit. Does the interest rate matter? Yes, but if the, the cash flow is big enough, then it'll offset the, the interest rate. Uh, it, it, even if it's higher than, than the, what the loans would be. Okay, uh, this is Korean Atlanta Mentorship. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below. Um, and also, if you want the spreadsheet, we'll still send it to you. But I just want to show, like, this is really easy to create. Create Like, you, you can do it yourself. I did it in, a, in, you know, like 10 minutes. So not really that hard, or at least I don't think it is. All right, have a great day, everybody, and we will speak next time.